Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called What Are Negative Numbers and Integers? Part One. So here we're going to obviously talk about what is a negative number and also the broader concept of what is an integer. Now, we already know what positive numbers are, right? If you have four apples, then you have four apples, one, two, three, four in your possession, right? But what about negative four apples? You see, the number four being positive number is how much stuff you have. So if I have four apples, that's how many I have. But the number negative four is like the exact opposite of positive four. And negative four apples would mean that I don't have four apples. I actually owe somebody else four apples. So you can think of negative numbers in many different ways, and we're going to talk about those ways in this lesson. But the main way I want you to think about it is when you have negative something, you have a debt, right? So think of it as dollars. $5 means I have actually $5 in my possession that I can spend, but negative $5 would mean that I have no money at all. I actually owe somebody else $5. So as soon as somebody gives me some money or I earn some money, I must pay that money out because it's a debt. So negative numbers are like debt and they're opposite to the positive numbers that we already know about. So let's take a look at uh, the same concept, but talking about a number line. So we can think about these numbers as being opposites. The opposite of three, uh, and we can go in on, on the number line, we have the center of the number line being zero. All of the numbers to the right get larger. It stops at 10, but the number line really goes on forever to you know infinity. It, it never stops, it goes this way. And then as we go to the left, we have not $1, but we have owing $1, owing $2, owing $3, owing $4. So the more we go this way, the more money we, we don't have, we don't have this money, it's more money we owe as a debt. So the numbers on this side are mirror images and opposites of the one on the other side. So if we have $3, that would be on the number line this many dollars, but the opposite of three would be over here at negative three, and that would be not having $3, that would be owing $3. So you see how they're mirror images kind of reflected about the zero point here. So the opposite of three is negative three. So the point of this lesson is to teach you that these numbers, obviously negative numbers, what they are is kind of like a debt or owing somebody some money, right? That's one way of thinking about it. But we also wanna talk about it being an opposite mirror image of the positive numbers. Let's take a look at this one. The opposite of four is what? Well, four on the number line, positive four donuts would be f having four donuts here, but the opposite of that would be on the other side, the same distance away to negative four. So negative four is the answer. And if I had negative four donuts, that means I don't have any donuts at all. I actually owe somebody else four donuts. So as soon as I manufacture any donuts in my donut shop, I gotta give them away because I have a debt of donuts, right? Negative, negative uh, numbers can be interpreted as debt or owing someone else something. It's not stuff you have, it's stuff that you owe. So before we go on, I want to talk about the idea of an integer. So these numbers over here, to the right are positive numbers. These are positive numbers. These numbers to the left are negative numbers. They're like debt, more and more and more debt going this way. So together, the positive whole numbers like this, along with the negative whole numbers like this, and including zero, we call those integers. So when you hear the word integer, it means all the positive whole numbers, all the negative whole numbers, and of course you have zero in there as well. All right, now you can have one half of a donut, that would be between zero and one. And you can have negative one half, which will be in between zero and negative one right here. Uh, of course, you can have negative and positive fractions. You can have negative and positive decimals. All the numbers are there, but the integers, when we say integer, that means the whole numbers. So integer means whole number positive, whole number negative. All the other numbers that are there, they're, they're not integers, they're fractions or whatever they are, but integers are whole numbers that are positive or negative. All right, now that we have the talking out of the way, we can crank through the rest of these a lot faster. So the opposite of eight is what? Well, the opposite of a positive is a negative number. And so if we had a positive eight right here, we would have a negative eight right here. Now we've been talking as our main example, uh, and notice these are mirror images of one another. We've been talking as our main example about uh, debt being negative numbers. I'm gonna give you a few different ways to think about negative numbers as we go along. Another way you can think about it is temperature, right? So if this is zero Celsius, Celsius, uh, zero Celsius is the freezing point of water, okay? So if we go up eight degrees, this is positive, this is eight degrees above the freezing point, eight degrees above zero, right? 
So what would it mean to be negative eight? That just means eight degrees below zero. So you can think of negative numbers just being below your reference point. Here the reference point is the, the freezing point of water, right? And above, the numbers that are bigger are the positive numbers, and the numbers below are like the debt in terms of money that you owe, but in terms of temperature can be that far below zero. So the negative numbers can be thought of many different ways. All right, what is the opposite of negative two? Well, if negative two is here, two degrees below zero, for instance, the opposite is just gonna be the mirror image which is two degrees above zero, so it's positive two. Now notice that when we write the negative numbers, we put a negative sign here, but when we write the positive numbers, we don't have to write the little positive symbol. If you want to, you can put a little positive, it's fine, but we usually don't do it. The positive numbers, if there's no sign, we just know that they're positive. The negative numbers, we usually, we always put that negative sign there, so we remember that it's negative. All right. Well, here we have some larger numbers. Notice now our number line goes off to 20 and it goes to negative 20. And notice that we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and the same thing this direction. Now the number one is still here, it's between zero and two. The number nine is still here, it's between eight and 10. So all of the integers, the whole numbers, that are positive or negative, they're all there. It's just to make this readable, I only put the, the even numbers there. So the opposite of 14, well, 14 degrees above zero would be here. And the opposite of that would be the same distance below zero, negative 14 degrees, negative 14 degrees. So part of this lesson is to get you comfortable with this number line too, to see that the more negative you are, it means the more below zero you are. So this is 14 degrees colder than zero Celsius. That would be negative 14 degrees. Or you could think of it as, owing someone $14. You, if you have $14, you have 14 of something. And if you have negative $14, it means I owe the bank or I owe somebody else or I borrowed $14, right? All right, let's talk about the next problem. The opposite of negative nine is, well, negative nine is right here. And the opposite would be the same distance on the other side, which is positive nine. So the opposite of negative nine is positive nine. Now let's come up with a new a new interpretation for negative and positive nine. We're gonna come up with lots of them as we go along here, okay? What if you're climbing a mountain, right? And the base of the mountain, or let's say you're, um, you're, you're, you're let's say you're in a submarine actually. Yeah, that's a better example. You're floating in a submarine, right? Now, the submarine is floating on the surface of the water. So the water is the zero point. So zero point is the floating on the surface of the uh, water. If you, you somehow could lift your submarine out of the water, which it can't do, but if you could, um, then you would be a positive altitude above the water. But if your submarine dives below the zero point, then you're nine meters or whatever it is below zero, negative nine. So you would say you're negative nine meters because that would tell you that you're nine meters below the surface. So the negative sign can tell you if you're above the zero point or below the zero point, just like nine degrees below zero is negative nine. This could be nine meters below zero where the zero is the surface of the water. Now I do have a few more. Let me take these down and we'll conquer those right now. All right, the opposite of 18 is what? But by now you know that the opposite of a positive number is just the negative number. So here we have 18 to the positive part of the number line. Negative 18 would be 18 units to the left here. Now let's think of another interpretation for this. You can think about uh, distance. Actually, it's called displacement, right? But just don't worry about the fancy word. We'll call it distance, right? If this zero is my starting point, here I'm standing in my starting point of zero. If I walk to the right 18 units, I walk to the right 18 units and I end up 18 meters away, let's say. If you instead say that I walk negative 18 meters, what does it mean? It just means that I still walk 18 meters, but I walk in the other direction. Do you see how positive and negative just mean different directions or opposites of each other? So that's why I keep saying the opposite of this is this. The opposite of walking 18 meters to the right is still walking 18 meters, but walking to the left, right? And so the negative tells you that you're going the opposite way from my zero point, but still 18 units. All right, the opposite of negative 12 is what? Positive 12. 
So here is negative 12 on the number line, and the opposite of that would be 12 units, the same distance mirror image away over here. Let's think of another interpretation of this. You can think of velocity, right? Le later on you le learn about velocity and speed and physics and things like that. Same kind of thing. I'm starting with, in this case, zero uh, meters per second. That's your velocity, right? So if I'm actually going 12 meters per second and this direction is the positive direction, then positive 12 means I'm traveling this way at 12 meters per second. So what would it mean to actually be going negative 12 meters per second? It would mean that I'm still traveling the same speed, 12 meters per second, but I'm going the other direction. So it's way over here. So positive speed means I go that way. Negative speed means I go this way. Positive distance means I go that way, that many distance units. Negative distance just means I go the other way, that many distance units. Positive money means that's how much money I have. Negative money means that's much how much money I owe. They are opposites. Positive temperature means that much above zero. Negative temperature means that many degrees below zero. Positive distance above sea level, the, the sea level for the submarine, is how many meters above the sea level I am. And negative that meters below sea level just means I'm down below the zero point. So negative and positive numbers are just opposites of each other. That's all that they are. Right? And the integers are all of the positive whole numbers and all of the negative whole numbers along with zero that we're drawing here on our number line. So that concludes the end of this lesson. I'd like you to go through it, work through these yourself, make sure you understand the concepts, and then follow me on to part two. We'll continue building your skills with negative numbers and integers.